So, um, good afternoon. Uh, hope everyone's holding you on in there. Um, as I said, I'm Mark Baker, I work for Canonical, I'm the product manager, uh, oversight product manager at Canonical. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Canonical is uh, the company behind Ubuntu. And um, keep plug for the user survey here. Thank you, Foundation, for running the user survey. Um, but uh, Ubuntu is a very popular platform upon which to run OpenStack. So uh, many people, most people, you could argue, could say, run their OpenStack uh, on Ubuntu today. Um, this is a selection. This is the NASCAR slide, I believe people call it. Um, the, uh, but the, the, the wall of logo slide. These are some of the people that are running Ubuntu OpenStack, uh, different types of OpenStack on top of uh, on top of Ubuntu today. Uh, a lot of those you will have seen are super users or on stage at the OpenStack summits. Uh, some good guys like Best Buy or uh, whoever ATT and others. So, uh, and again, a small selection of the customers that we engage with. Um, that's the corporate advertising over, you'll be glad to know. The, um, so what do all of these guys uh, have in common? You don't want to guess? Do I just get on with it? So, all of these guys uh, run um, containers, right? All of these technologies are based upon containers. And who's running containers? No one? Containers, big opportunity here in Prague. Good. So, um, so all these guys are running containers, it doesn't matter. A lot of them running uh, Ubuntu as well, so you'll see you know, guys like Kuro, Kuroku, OpenWRT, just doing stuff with containers. Uh, Proxbox with the OpenPC containers. Docker, of course, the, the darling of the container community. Uh, resources and others, right? So containers, containers, containers. And this talk really is about how we can use containers, how we are canonical with Ubuntu OpenStack. We can use containers if we wish to be able to deploy, manage and scale OpenStack in kind of interesting ways. Um, so we took a little about hypervisors. IBM, back in the, probably some smart IBM distinguished engineer, uh, back in the mid-70s, uh, wrote a paper on hypervisors. Right? So, you know, hypervisors, the concept of hypervisors has been around for quite a long time. Um, and they split that into two types. Whoever it was that wrote that paper's name, I can't remember, split it into two types of hypervisor. The type one, uh, kind of full para-virtualized hypervisor environments, uh, aka kind of VMware, and, Zen type of environments. And then the type two, the kind of hardware accelerated uh, hypervisor environments, things like uh, VirtualBox or KVM, uh, some others there too. Um, we at uh, Canonical have uh, led the development of something called LXD or LexD. And this we're somewhat cheekily proposing as being a type three hypervisor. Right? So it's a hypervisor designed specifically to run containers. To deploy, manage, scale, and operate with containers. So, uh, LXD or LXD provides a machine container. Who knows what a machine container is? Good. Well, I will show you anyway, even if you tell me you want you. Um, so, hopefully, you can see this. This is, by the way, this this session has lots of live demos in it. There's a lot of screen in it. So, if you can't tell that, tell, uh, see what I'm typing. Please tell me, and you're going to be really bored. Um, so, uh, everyone's heard of Docker, right? And Docker is a what we would class as being an application container. So, if you can see on my, my table here on the, uh, I guess, your left hand side, so you're looking at it. Um, if I just go and connect to a container, to go and uh, enter my pseudo root password, because Docker has to run, certainly in 110, the version I'm running here, uh, has to uh, run fully privileged. Uh, I'm inside my Docker container now, and if I uh, uh, I'll see a bunch of stuff, and if I uh, go and have a look at anyone that gives live demos, by the way, you know you lose the ability to type rapidly as it goes through. Um, so you see, this application container, this Docker container, is only running one thing. It's just running Bash, right? That's because I created a Docker container, just sitting down earlier on, that has just Bash in it, right? And I only see that straight. Docker container. So if I come back out to my shell, to put it at the top of the screen so you can see, if I go and have a look at uh, a system container, let's do the same thing. So LXC, a Linux container I've created here that's using LXD, the hypervisor. If I go and do the same thing, it's going to uh, access that. This is, you can see, I'll see a whole bunch of stuff on my LS, but in, uh, in my home directory. Um, but notice, one, I didn't need to sudo for that, right? So I was just running as an unprivileged environment. And two, uh, if I 
have a look in that environment, you can see, oh, you can't see particularly well because of the scrolling. But there's a whole different set of, uh, so let's try that again. There's a whole different set of um, uh, uh, processes running, right? It looks actually much more like a full Linux environment. And so that's because it is much more of a full Linux environment, right? So uh, it's not just the one process of a Docker container, an application container, LXC or LXD are full system containers, right? So it's kind of very analogous to a VM, right? It's just like a VM. And if I wanted to in here, I could do, um, let's do sudo apps update, for example. I can go, and, this is running on my Wi-Fi hotspot here, so don't, you won't be impressed with the speed, but um, I can go and pull the updates. I can even go and, is there anything to update? All the packages are up to date there, but I can go and update this, install new packages if I wanted to, that kind of stuff, right? So um, that's the difference between a system container and a, uh, a, a machine what we class as being an application container. Let's flip back to presentation land for a second. So LexD provides a machine container. It's something that looks and smells just like a VM. It could be any type of Linux, right? Any, any as you probably know, containers. You can run Linux containers on the Linux platform. Uh, no Windows just yet. Uh, so LexD provides those machine containers um, application containers, just like Docker, host a single process on the file system. The example we just showed you there was, was, a, was a course bash. A machine container like see, boot a full OS on their file system. The thing it's sharing is the kernel, right? So there's only one kernel on, on, on my laptop right now, as far as I'm aware. And so, uh, but all the user space processes, all the libraries, etc., are wrapped in that container and it looks just more like a VM. So, I actually jumped ahead to the demo. So, we see these kind of Linux containers, the machine containers sitting somewhere between a virtual machine um, and a physical machine uh, and a kind of Docker or process container. Right? Sitting on top of LexD, it acts and behaves just like a VM, except it's sharing the kernel, and that gives us some benefits. Right? LexD is, uh, is an uh, API driven. Right? So, the API. Uh, means that we can access it remotely over a, a, a REST API. So using a single single machine, I can go and interact with containers across all sorts of different platforms. Um, uh, there's also integration, which you'll see down here, and over LXD with over Stack Nova, and I'll come and uh, explain that in a second. Sitting underneath this, something called ZFS, or ZFS if you're English. Right? Who's heard of that? A few people, good. Good, good, good. So ZFS or ZFS is a very well respected um, uh, file system technology. It provides a lot of um, very cool file system features, snapshots, backups, copy and write clones. You can read the details there. It's very, very high performance, does a lot of deduping on the fly. It's very, very efficient, very well respected. Right? People who knew and loved Solaris before they got hooked on Linux um, generally talk about two things that they loved with Solaris. Excuse me, guys, I still have 30 minutes here, is that right? Excellent. Extra time for me. So, um, the uh, people that, that worked with Solaris uh, generally loved two things about it. Right? Was uh, one was uh, D-Trace, and the other was was ZFS. Right? And those were often the things back in the day when I worked at Red Hat, helping replace uh, Solaris in big data centers in the city. Uh, those were the two things that the Solaris admins would moan about. Right? Where is D-Trace? Where is ZFS? Right? They got over that. But anyway. So this is sitting on the, everything I was just showing you earlier on, those uh, LXD containers are sitting on top of ZFS, and that makes them super fast, because um, LXD sitting in conjunction with ZFS makes the spawning containers, snapshotting containers, running containers, really very, very fast indeed. So, why is the world faster OpenStack? Well, first up, um, I don't have any data that shows that it is, right? There's no benchmark that says this is the fastest. Um, I could go make up a benchmark and do that, but there's really no point. But um, this is a hyper version architecture that deploys um, in minutes because we can deploy in containers. You already saw that earlier on. Um, dozens of uh, LexD instances, container instances run launch very, very quickly. We can snapshot stuff. I'm going to show you all of this, so I'll, uh, um, if I, I'll just kind of come to that. So in my environment here, back on. Uh, here, if I um, exit out of that, and come back onto my OS, uh, clear, 
But I run, let's go and do something. Who's, if you're familiar with Syspanx, Syspanx is a benchmarking utility. I'm just running this natively on my laptop. I have a pretty poor laptop. It's an old one that I travel with that I don't get too upset if it gets stolen. So um, it's not going to be overly impressive, but it's going to run about 1,000 or 10,000 iterations, I think, of calculating something on the, um, on the processor here. Um, so as soon as that finishes, it normally takes about 10 seconds, there we go, so yeah, 9.94 seconds. This can vary a little depending on the jitter that we have on the system and stuff like that. If I go back to my uh, uh, container, and I can hopefully do the same, um, just wanted to stress this, this should be within a few percent, right, in terms of the performance. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you that running a container is akin to running on bare metal, right? If I do a benchmark, whenever it comes back, there we go, was it within a, yeah, is it a, within, whatever it was, four hundredths of a second. So pretty, pretty nascent. In fact, it looks faster actually in a container, which is probably just just, 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 just around the system. Right, so that's the, the few percent. So what is that giving you? It's giving you native bare metal performance, right? And that's, that's important, right? Because the, there's no doubting it. KVM, your hypervisor of choice, can add um, a little overhead in terms of that network performance. Um, but we go and flip to uh, something here. Uh, actually, let's go. Let's go back here. So onto this screen. Here, I have um, a system that is running OpenStack. So if I uh, run here, you'll see. A whole bunch of different things that are running containers and other bits and pieces, right? Whole, whole heap of stuff. Right? If I do a LXC list, you'll see that there are um, about how many, 16 or so uh, containers, right? Each one of these is running an OpenStack service. This is all running, uh, it's not actually on my laptop, because I don't have enough memory, you need about 16 gig of RAM to run this on a single machine. But um, it's running on, actually, believe it or not, Intel NUC, right, that has 16 gig of RAM and an SSD. So, is, is actually based over in Colorado. So, um, performance is okay for that. So, I've got my 16 servers. This is all being put together actually using something called uh, Juju. I'm not going to talk about Juju uh, other than say, you'll see that there's a pretty much a one-to-one -one mapping between the different services that we deployed managed with, that we deployed and managing with Juju and the number of containers that we have. Uh, if I just scroll up a little, um, then you'll see uh, we're running there, right, with uh, LXC list. You also notice um, that on the right hand side we've got something called snapshots. Snapshots. As you did call snapshots for the time being. We'll come back to snapshots in a minute. So all of these services are running. If I go and connect onto my this may all have timed out, so let's go and have a look. Go and connect onto my system. You'll see that. Oh, there we go. So uh, this is the environment I have that's running. This is a, all running on a single Intel node, running in 16 or so containers. Nothing particularly exciting going on right now. Go and have a look at the instances. I've probably only got one running. Uh, let's go and launch an instance. Uh, let's call it demo two, very creatively. Take it in there. <laughs> Get to the next. Let's go and choose Montezino. Next. So go ahead and launch that. That's going to spin up an instance within the OpenStack environment. So it's all running on that single machine. Uh, off it goes, starts building it, spawning it. Right? And you'll see the image name here kind of gives you a clue. It's, it's uh, Xenial D. So what's actually being launched is not a VM, but it's a container. Right? It's a LexD, it's a full Linux container that's running inside of our OpenStack that's deployed in LexD containers. Right? So, um, the reason that we're able to do this on a single Intel NUC is because of that, that efficiency, right? So this is thanks to something called the Nova LexD driver, something that we've um, written uh, in the process of working with John Garber, Nova, Nova, CG, uh, Nova ETL, trying to upstream in a the same gentle way. Um, uh, so it should be available to everybody pretty soon. Good, so, as I said, uh, we've got a number of things running. Let me just flip back to, I've got a cheat sheet here. I just want to make sure that I'm showing everything that we've got. There we go. 
So, it's a good job I did that, because there was a bit that I forgot. So, um, I put this together, this OpenStack Cloud, uh, together using something called ConjureUp. So, um, ConjureUp, if anyone's running Ubuntu 1604, um, come out of here. You can see here, it's clear so we can get that, and history. This is a machine that I uh, launched this morning. Uh, you can see these are all 29 commands that I've run on that machine since it was, uh, was born on this other Intel NUC. Uh, so you can see it's pretty, and uh, half of these are duplicates because I can't type or I was just practicing. Um, like, so updated it, upgraded it, added a repo, uh, installed a bunch of counter up ZFS stuff, uh, run some config commands, and then ran something called counter up OpenStack, right? Counter up OpenStack. Dun -dun. across my fingers, gives us this very simple encursus driven user interface um, to be able to use um, the container, to be able to build containers underneath, on a, either on a single machine or on multiple machines. I know what I've done wrong there, there we go. So here I get three choices, I can build an OpenStack, I can build OpenStack with Nova LXD, the hypervisor allows us to be able to deploy managed containers within Nova, uh, or do something with the OpenStack autopilot, that's another tool that we have which I won't uh, discuss with you right now. So, um, very, very simply, if I go ahead, go ahead and select that, a little bit of lag. A lot of lag. Okay, I'll skip out of that. The, um, what that does is it gives you a very simple interface to be able to say, build me an OpenStack, go choose which services I want, and deploy them into the containers. So this is how we arrive essentially at, at the number of containers we have deployed here. Um, that's running our OpenStack environment. So, um, let's go and have a look at, uh, we do Alexi exec, uh, let's go choose one of these. I should ask the audience to choose one of these, really, if I was being adventurous. Um, but I won't do that. So, go into that and see which, what this is running. Keystone, right? So this is running Keystone, so Keystone server. Pretty important part of your OpenStack environment, I think we'll all agree. So um, let's come out of that. Because it's such an important piece, I'm going to um, let's go and see. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to take a snapshot of that. Right? And I'm going to snap, snapshot it. Um, let's go and call it backup two. So I'm not going to conflict or anything. I'm going to take a snapshot, so it's taking a full snapshot of the LXC container that's running our Keystone environment. We just saw do that. That was really fast. Right, so that's thanks to ZFS, it's running underneath it. Um, let's go back into that machine. So this is running, can you see that on the back? It's running um, our Keystone environment. Let's just go and check, it still is. So this is running our Keystone environment. And uh, let's go there, right? You see that? Is that recommended? So, um, so now this is going to give us some problems, actually. So, in fact, we do that again. So that, I think you'll probably agree that's going to make life difficult for Keystone. It's running in our environment. And this is our this was our our pro production OpenStack environment. That's going to cause us some trouble. So, but thanks to um, the fact that we're taking a snapshot of that, we want to be able to get our restore a known good ver uh, version. Let's go. We can do we get the right one. Let's go and grab it from my cheat sheet. There's some things that are just too big to type when you're uh, doing a live demo. Well, there's two, right? How long did that take? A second? Two seconds, maybe? So um, if we go back and do the same thing, back into our environment, as I AUX, our clouds should still be running, and I should, 
Cross my fingers. Be able to continue to navigate around my environment, right? So you can begin to see how this is gives us not only a kind of pretty high performance environment running at native bare metal speed, um, both our OpenStack environment is running containers and workloads are running within it bare metal speed, but you think how it gives us a nice means to be able to um, provide some resilience in our environment, right? So availability, you know, as people know that operators will know, availability is not just about how do you keep systems available, it's how quickly can you restore them when they when they go belly up, right? Which inevitably they will do at some point in their life. So, uh, just to uh, make that point again, we have here all of these containers running. If I want to take a, complete, a snapshot of my um, entire environment, if I've got the right thing in my history, yes, we go. Uh, just using this LXE list, grep running, column 2, uh, XRX minus I, LXE snapshot, boom, boom. Let's take a snapshot of every single container in my environment. Uh, and if I do an LXE list again, you see, we've now got a snapshot of every single container that's running an OpenStack service. Right? So I can do this all day, I won't do it because I haven't got enough time, but I can do this all day, is go into each service in turn, do something rude and unusual to it, and then just restore it, continuing having my happy, go lucky OpenStack environment. So the other piece to come back to, and I started to show you just the, uh, uh, the piece here, you'll see that in terms of hypervisors on this cloud, we haven't got any traditional, I guess you've got class of as traditional hypervisors. So there's no KVM in this environment right here. This is designed specifically to run on a small lightweight environment and do lightweight things. You could run it in your production system if you wanted. But really it's designed for people that want to be able to build a real cloud, something a little beyond the dev stack, uh, be able to spawn real VMs in it with services that are connected in real way. So we've only got this one hypervisor here, which is the LexD hypervisor, and you'll see the, uh, that that's running a couple of instances. Good, so there's a whole heap of backup slides here in case of demo file, so I'll have to scroll through those really fast. So this hypervisor, the hyperconverged architecture, um, there are very many different architectures that you can use to deploy an OpenStack environment. Um, the way that ContraUp deploys this is um, uh, it's deploying all on a single system. But if we, if we had multiple systems, it would spray or, or distribute each of those application loads across um, as many machines as possible. And that's um, often referred to a hyperconverged hyper architecture. Uh, for those of you who remember Piston, if you're old enough in OpenStack to remember them. Uh, Piston used a similar thing, right? So uh, running, spraying services across as many machines as possible, sharing compute and storage. Um, and so uh, if you're using ContraUp to deploy an OpenStack environment, um, then it uh, uses the same model. And uh, we've got that, that exact architecture in play in many of the production customers I've talked about. So people like Sky, people like Ocean Telecom, uh, and others. Um, and it's running very successfully, very fast. So again, please do give it a go. Uh, we've got, say, dozens of those Lexi instances uh, launching in seconds. We can snapshot everything super fast uh, and run at bare metal speed. So, if you want to give this a go, you're going to need to do a few things. Um, the first is going to be running um, Ubuntu 16.04. Right, so this is all pretty new stuff. It's all on uh, Ubuntu 16.04. If you go and deploy a bunch of 16.04 on a machine, you can probably deploy it in a VM if you've got a chunky enough machine. Um, but deploy that, you're going to need 16 gig of RAM. Update, get all your uh, uh, archives up to date, uh, and then go and install something called Conjure Up. Conjure dash up. So do app. Get install Conjure dash up. Run that, and that's going to allow you to build the entire OpenStack environment on a single machine with that Nova Next environment. Let's go back and see whether we got as far as that. There we go. I don't know for whatever reason that wasn't doing. I'm, I'm having to run numerous SSH tunnels to be able to get here. It's quite likely that one of us cracked out. So, um, uh, forgive that. 
Um, other places you can get more information, ubuntu.com forward slash LexD. So we want information about how you can use LexD to be able to deploy, manage and run full system containers. Uh, that's there. There's obviously also information there about what we're doing with Nova LexD, if you want to be able to find that out. Uh, if you want uh, LXC, the Linux Container Project sits on GitHub, like most things, and also linuxcontainers.org. So go and check those out. Um, and that was it. I'm finishing with, uh, with, with four minutes to spare. Does anybody have any, uh, any questions? No? In that case, thank you very much. You get four minutes back. <laughs>